A couple of altcoins look primed to move within the market. Um, we can see over here, if you look at the chart, well, uh, ultimately, there are meme coins making moves right now. Meme coins are making moves. We have uh, Woof, the Solana meme coin, uh, Dog Woof hat, right? Dog Woof hat over there all the way on the bottom. Already breaking into the top five meme, coin, uh, meme coins as per market cap. That is $440 million right now. Uh, market cap for whip so closing in on pepe which is of course on eth and then we have bonk as well uh, also over there on uh, solana with 822 so if you look over there the risk appetite for the top gamers a lot of them are in these dgen plays uh, like the meme coins uh, we're going to have a look at some of those meme coins we're going to have a look at some potential trade opportunities um, and we will get started with the show so without further ado let's get straight into it uh, we'll start off over here with the banter bubbles, right? Banter bubbles charts. A uh, couple of the coins are turning green, at least in the top 100. What about the daily? Uh, you can see over there, P hex is definitely one that's standing out. DYDX, ETH, DYDX also standing out. If you ever want to find out why, that's so random, right? So random why. Uh, ETH DYDX is uh, performing so well on the daily. Go through to the discussion section over here, um, click on the bubble, and then you can chat with the community over there. You'll find out if there was something newsworthy that came out. Also, join us in the newsroom. This is where a lot of the alpha has dropped. A lot of the show content um, is found over here. For example, this, this tweet over here. I'm about to bring up, right? There it is. Let's bring that up. So if you look over here from charts, BTC, Bitcoin bottom to top, what does this typically look like through the various different bull run cycles? We had the 2015 cycle, then the 2018, and now the 2022 cycle. And ultimately, what I'm trying to outline here is what happens prior to the halving. Now, it's very, very common that just before the halving over there, you do get some sort of a pullback into those key zones. And ultimately, once you cross the halving mark, which was predicted to be between about April and May of of this year, then it's an up only environment, up only environment. So you really want to establish those altcoin positions and have your portfolio set leading into the next major uh, rally. So we'll get into what that looks like. We'll get into will we get the pre halving dump over here? Because if you look at Bitcoin right now on the daily time frame, well, it is finding support on the top side of that Ichimoku cloud. There it is. We have touch point one that led to a little bit of a bounce we have now touch point two three four so we don't want to knock into the ichimoku cloud too many times for now it continues to remain a bullish trend until such time as of course we get the bearish cross over here uh, with the ichimoku cloud that has not yet been seen so onwards and upwards is the name of the game we also have the fear and greed which is resetting over here if you see the fear and greed did reach around that 80 mark and you can see it's now trending back towards the downside, currently situated uh, at 48. So almost a full reset on the fear and greed. And we outlined already months ago uh, the bearish divergence that was taking place, right? We identified that already uh, establishing from the 25th of October. And we had that full confirmation into early December, the 5th of December. We had bearish confirmation, the RSI trending towards the downside price trending towards the uh, the upside so complete uh, divergence over there and consequently price started to roll over which is what we're currently seeing but will there be a bounce that's the question because it looks like bulls could potentially attempt at that 44 to 45 thousand dollar mark for bitcoin why well if you look over here you can see that we have a massive assortium of liquidity. Where do I get that liquidity from? Well I'll get it from here on trading lights and if you zoom in and you look at these zones, these are pretty substantial orders, right? 997, 992 Bitcoin sell orders over there. And if you scroll up and you look over here, 1.2 thousand right a thousand two hundred bitcoin sell orders waiting to be taken off the books over there um, and hit the open market so we'll have to pay attention to that if price does get above there and manages to close above though then ultimately that would be a sign that maybe there was a little bit of a bear trap and we're going to have continuation higher and attempt one more time uh, potentially anywhere between i would be looking at 47,600 and possibly even up to 51 to 52,000 dollars those are the zones to watch but it all depends on what happens with this candle as this candle moves up over here into 
those big Bitcoin sell orders, which I've marked off over there, uh, then will it immediately turn into a wick and close back below? If you do see that, well, that's your confirmation that you have a swing failure pattern. It's a bearish sign. And ultimately, price will lose that 50 uh the 50 ma on the daily time frame once again and then you need to look to your next zones of support uh which is the 200 ma which is currently rising or the 200 ema is the light blue one the 200 ma is the dark blue one uh currently both of them are situated here we go we can outline it you're looking at that zone over there so between $33,000 and $35,000. Remember, it continues to rise with each and every week because price is hovering above. That allows for those MAs and EMAs to rise towards the upside. So some very, very key significant levels. This is good if bulls can continue to at least hold price sideways and defend this region over here around $40,000. It will allow for these strong areas of support to slowly rise and catch up. And ultimately, then those lower um, sub $30,000 price targets start to get taken completely off the table. Not to say it's not possible, it's still a possibility, but we're looking at a defense of this range over here. We understand that risk is now towards the downside and we need to see these levels reclaimed, right? We need to see closing candles happening above these different EMAs because we have the cross, cross towards the downside, the bearish cross, the nine has crossed below the 18. That is providing now resistance. And this is typically where you see Bitcoin roll over in that environment. The real actions in the altcoins, and that's really where you want to be looking going forward in the coming months or to even, even to say in the coming year and a half, right? Because like Ted talks macro says over here, uh, by next year, at some point during 2025, so he's giving himself around 12 months for this bet. He bets that USD liquidity in crypto will once again hit an all-time high. That means that the flows will be at all-time highs. That means that the uh, new capital will be rotating into crypto in an aggressive way. And that's where you see those altcoins rally. So it says, given recent history, alt should front run Keyword, the market's always forward looking. So the altcoins will probably front run those flows already this year, expecting that that's going to take place, uh, meaning altcoins are where you want to be, right? Since October last year, 10 billion USD has entered the crypto market. This will accelerate as the stock market and additional instruments struggle to entertain uh, Zuma appetite for fast gains and keep pace with inflationary pressures. So there you have a total three correlated with the USD stablecoin supply is increasing towards the upside. And there are additional flows also coming into the market. 3% uh, of the total supply of Bitcoin is now in uh, ETFs. 0.22% of that is in 10 new ETFs that have been trading for at least three days. And as Fred says over here, Larry Fink, of course, the CEO of BlackRock, is right. ETFs are going to take over the world. In 2024, their target is Bitcoin. They're targeting Bitcoin. New inflows are coming, although slow, right? So initially, it's not creating the reaction that many wanted. Uh, it was actually a buy the rumor, sell the news event, which is what we said was most probable on the show. And uh, you have to have a higher time frame horizon, right? If you're looking over the medium to longer term, well, that's where you expect that those flows will really start to have an impact on the overall crypto market. And that net USD liquidity, as TED Talks Macro suggests, will trend towards all-time highs and then crypto will be doing phenomenally well. So before we move on to the rest of the show, smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel. Most people don't know that I'm on this channel, so it would really help if you guys smash the like button, everybody smash the like button. And then also uh, subscribe to the channel, right? Let's get it to... Uh 130,000 subscribers. So while you're smashing the like button, let's see, I'm going to wait. I want to see this slowly rolling up and ticking towards the upside. Get this to 130,000 subscribers as soon as possible. It would really be very, very helpful. Okay, let's look at Bitcoin and then we'll move on to the altcoins. We'll finish off on the low time frames over here. So you can see Bitcoin currently 42,856, but we do have resistance over here. This is going to be tough resistance between the 200 EMA, which is, uh, of course, going to be on the four-hour time frame, and the 50 EMA. So that's rising up to uh, 43,400. So if Bitcoin can reclaim 43,500, it will reclaim these EMAs, hold above that, 
And that would look like a good opportunity for a bit of a bear trap, but it's too soon to tell. Let's observe. You can see we already had the first warning sign, which is uh, ultimately when price came into those EMAs over there, we got a slight rejection. We got a slight rejection over there. Bitcoin dominance, yesterday there was a trading view glitch. We had like this massive wick uh, for Bitcoin dominance, ETH dominance, USDT dominance. Everything was all over the place. It looks like trading view fixed it. It was simply just a glitch. Understand that we're playing this trading range, right? Let's make this nice and big. Let's see as well if we can add possibly some arrows. There we go. Arrow there. Error there. Maybe let's make it solid. There we go. Much better. There we go. That's the trading range. Now you can see it nice and clear. That is the trading range that we're playing for Bitcoin dominance, which means so long as Bitcoin dominance maintains and holds over here above this level, this is going to be the key level, your last higher low, that's your major higher low, your super significant spot, 48.9%. So long as it holds above that, we have to treat this level to level, which means your expectation would be continuation up to 60%, which is actually the measured move of the range breakout, right? If you take the measured move, this is how you get the measured move. You simply take this over there. What's the measured move? Bottom to top. Copy and paste that over there. It's giving you the measured move into the 60% level. So all in all, we can't go too aggressive into altcoins yet because there could end up being a bull trap scenario on the altcoins. We'll outline which ones look strongest on today's show. I have a couple for you. Smash the like button if you want those. Also, let me know in the comments if there is anything specific uh, that you're looking at, any altcoins that you believe are in the zone. And then also... Uh, vote in the poll section below. Which sector do you think is going to make the most amount of millionaires? Vote in the poll section below. Um, that is on YouTube poll section. Is it going to be meme coins? Is it going to be new layer ones and layer twos? Is it going to be the restaking narrative? Or if it's going to be something else, select other. But then you have to drop in the comment section what else is it going to be? I'm having a look over here um, at the comments right now as you guys drop it. So um, I'll keep an eye on that section. And so will James, uh, just make sure that you, you, you drop if it's other, what else is it going to be? Okay, total three, all in all, still looking good, still consolidating in the yellow box. This is what we expect to lead into that next markup phase, right? In order for the next markup phase to take place as per the Wyckoff accumulation, well, ultimately, uh, this is what you're looking at. You're looking at a consolidation over here, and then you can get a breakout to higher prices. Total two, let's see, total two. Uh, we identified on a prior show's analysis that total two's real rally starts to begin after the Bitcoin halving. So observe over here and just make sure that the top of the range high holds as opposed to breaking back into uh, the low regions. But as long as total two can maintain above 702.5 billion, then technically speaking, there is an opportunity for the altcoins to continue to rally. And we saw that in the ETH BTC chart, strong move towards the upside, broke back into the range, broke the long-term downtrend. Now you just need to be patient to get some sort of a pullback into the 0.055 level. And then you can start to move from Bitcoin into those altcoins. ETH USD on the right-hand side over here looks super strong still. So long as it's holding above uh, $2,450. If it holds above $2,450, and even if it ranges over here, then I expect at a later date continuation towards our long-term target, which was $3,300. We gave this target already months ago when we saw, uh, I think we gave this ages ago, literally somewhere down here in October when we said there is an ascending triangle that's forming. And you, again, you can work out the measured move of that ascending triangle by literally looking at the base, right? You take it from the bottom of the base of the triangle to the top, copy and paste that on the top side here. It lines up with the left-hand side liquidity. And that is the zone, right? Okay, that is the zone. That is the zone that we're looking at over there. High block capital, uh, you can see over here, market participants are in undecided, indecisive in terms of which direction they want to take. We had pretty negative funding looking for um, a big sell-off towards the downside. They started to close those positions, flip long, then they flip short. Now they're flipping long again. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. Everybody is waiting for market direction uh, for the market to make a decision on which way it wants to go. So 
we'll observe this very, very carefully. We'll see if one side builds up. This is not enough to fade in the opposite direction. I always tell you, look at this high block capital chart over here. And if you do want to fade this price action when it's extreme and price is coming into either support or resistance, depending on which side it, it is, then you have a high probability trade setup. We don't have that right now for Bitcoin. Okay. Also, when it comes to altcoins, I want to also forewarn you and make it clear this is a visual that came from Pantera Capital, uh, the big crypto investment fund, and it's excellent. Look here, it's 2017 coins all the way to 2021 peak coins. So if you look at the different bull markets and then you look to today, what I want to show you over here, well, firstly, Bitcoin remains the king in number one position every single year, always number one. It's never been flipped. It came, uh, there was the flippening talk of Ripple flippening uh, or flipping and getting into a higher market cap than Bitcoin in 2017. That did not take place. Then there was obviously always has been the talk of ETH flipping Bitcoin. Who knows? Maybe that could still potentially happen one day. But then look at how the rankings start to switch over here. We had um, over here IOTA, Stellar, Tron, Litecoin, NEM. Cardano. Okay, let's look at the next one. We had, yeah, then we had Luna, Shiba Inu, Doge, Dot. These were real DJs, right? Putting those meme coins into the top 10 crypto market caps in the last cycle. Uh, Ripple, look at where Ripple dropped down from number two. And then today we have uh, Polygon, Matic, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Avalanche, Cardano, Ripple. So Cardano and Ripple somehow seem to be holding at least within the top 10 rankings over there, um, which is why you have such a big fan base, right, for these coins. Uh, for XRP, you have such a massive fan base because it has maintained that. But ultimately, if you compare and you look at what's happened to it, and we'll bring this across over here, let's just bring up one of those for interest sake. Let's go to CoinGecko and show you what the chart looks like. Let's look at the chart on XRP. I'm not picking on XRP. I'm just clicking. We can look at Cardano as well. If you go here onto max and you look at the USD value, well, what has happened in the USD value? It's absolutely collapsed, right? You haven't got anywhere near those ultimate peaks. Yes, you had a major, major rally in 2021, but it didn't get anywhere near the hype that was presented in 2017, 2018. Now, what is uh, more scary is if you were to look at this uh, in the denominated value of, where do I change that? Where do I change that? Let's see. If you look at this against Bitcoin, where do I change this to Bitcoin? Let's just try over here. I think it is here. Uh, let's see. BTC. This is what you really need to look at. You need to see. There we go. That's what the chart looks like against Bitcoin. Uh, it did have a big spike, as mentioned, in 2017-18. But look against Bitcoin terms in 2021, it's pretty much died down. It's completely flat. Now, let's do the same thing. And we will look at Cardano, since that was one of the coins that has been around for a long time. Here is Cardano. Okay, Max. Let's look at Max. This is against Bitcoin. Same thing, right? Here it was most hyped, 2017. This one actually got very, very close to taking out the highs. But in my personal, humble opinion, I don't believe that Cardano will create a higher high than the 2021 peak against Bitcoin, right? Let's look at what it looks like against USD. So just quickly change that currency over here, USD. How does the total time frame look against USD? There it is. Okay. Big, big rally. It did take out the 2017 high. So that all in all is pretty good. Let me know in the comments, are you an XRP and or Cardano fan? I'd love to know. I form uh, for infrastructure play. So have a look over there. Let's continue on with the show. Let's get into some of the altcoins. We went through the portfolio analysis, right? We went through the portfolio analysis um, over the last couple of days, the last two or three days. Um, now, I wanted to look at the rotational game between uh, Sei and Sui, right? Sei and Sui. Now, if you look at this as a ratio, you'll find something pretty interesting. Here it is. This shows you in the same way that you look at ETH BTC. So I put in Sei USDT, a uh, little dash over there, Sui USDT. It will show you, is one going to outperform the other? So if 
this is moving towards the downside while sui is outperforming say if this is moving towards the upside then say is outperforming sui and it's similar to what you saw between solana and avax the solana rotation into avax uh, that is a common theme right now you can see the money flow point of control this is um, if you look over here at the chart prime market dynamics indicator the money flow uh, point of control is lined up right over there with also this key area that I've marked off. So all in all, it's coming into that zone. I'm expecting a little bit of a reaction from this level, which means if you do get that reaction towards the upside and this prior resistance can now flip into support over there, you can see support, support, we're coming back to back test. If you can hold that as support, I think that say could outperform SUI. And if we look at the chart over here, we'll see, let's quickly go into the chart. There we go. I marked off yesterday these key levels. And there it is again. The money flow point of control um, has also printed a, a strong level of support over here. And you have this flipping from prior resistance into support. Look at that range breakout. You came into this level. You're holding it as support. There could be an opportunity for a long trade over here. Watch these key levels at uh, anywhere between 80 cents. And if it does come down a little bit lower and you get one more sweep into that 63 cent level, uh, I think that this is where your range is forming, right? You're getting a little bit of a range over here. You might range between these two levels for a while. You can build your position uh, around the bottom over there. Of course, stops go below those wicks, uh, which is, if you're charting it on the daily time frame, a pretty good risk to reward ratio trade over there. We'll have a look at some of the others in just a moment. If you do want to check our chart primes indicators, keep in mind they offer a very simple to use buy and sell. You can literally, uh, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like now, but they have a risk-free seven-day trial. So you don't even have to pay anything. You can go and try it out for seven days. Um, let's move on to the daily time frame over here. Okay, on to the daily time frame. Uh, that's my expectation, right? That's what I'm looking at. Something like that for say, uh, for to come back down into that money flow point of control, hold that level, and then for another move towards the upside. Okay, what else was I looking at? Well, we know that Apex has been doing phenomenally well. Apex is one of the calls that we gave in Whale Room. And we're just wondering when should we actually take profit on this thing? It's absolutely flown. I think we gave it at around 26 cents. I'll have to check there in whale room. I mean, that is already almost a thousand percent move, already a thousand percent move on Apex. All in all, that's looking good. Another one that I was looking at that looks pretty solid is Naka, right? Nakamoto uh, games over here. Why? Because coming into a key level, look at price right here. If it can flip this level into support, this is where you see those aggressive moves. And it reminds me of Renda. I'm going to bring up Renda in a moment. This is where you see those types of moves. Boom. Where you see strong moves towards the upside. The alternative is if it can't defend and hold this level, as always, we must put or place a stop loss into the market. And you'd be looking at something like this, right? Uh, let's just get it exact. There we go. That would be my level. You are completely wrong on the idea if price starts to even wick below $1.10. That is on a Nakamoto long, because if you do do that, ultimately this entire move is going to be seen as a deviation back into the range. And then you're probably going to revisit the money flow points of control, which currently is situated at about 43 cents. So that's Naka. The other one which I mentioned yesterday already was Render. So this is similar to Naka, right? If you look at Naka again, let me just show it to you. There's Naka. I'm saying that if it holds this level, this is where you see those very, very aggressive moves back towards the upside. Now, that's what Render did, right? There you had your key level. I marked it off at $3.20. Price came down and ultimately led to pretty much a big move towards the upside. You had that spike. Currently, give or take, you're up about 15%. It's based on this order block over here. You can see you wicked back into that level tested it and proceeded to rally. So all in all, you still have your higher highs. Uh, again, chart primes indicator is showing you over here, high, 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 high. Uh, you have continuation of the trend. You have your break of structure over here. Uh, watch and wait. If, you, if you're somebody that's using chart prime and you want to wait for confirmation, well, it will probably give you a break of structure um, over there in the same way that's shown over here. Once you have that break of structure, you know 
your long is onwards and upwards and you're expecting continuation to new higher highs on uh, on render. So feel free, check that out. I'm going to take chart requests as well, guys. Start dropping those chart requests in the um, comment section below. Now, unfortunately, my sound's not working on this today. So instead, we can listen to some absolutely amazing rave music. There we go. But what did I want to say over here? If you look at Bitcoin magazine, they said just then Donald Trump says, as your president, I'll never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Now, if this is true, that would be pretty significant news. If you, if you, Even if you hate the orange man, you have to say that this is probably going to develop a bit of hype within the crypto world, right? Because crypto is anti-CBDCs, right? Such a currency would give our federal government absolute control over your money and your life. I mean, they've implemented things like this in uh, China. Hopefully, I don't get banned for saying that, but we know they already have uh, these types of social credit scores and CBDCs already happening and working in China, which is absolutely crazy. So whether you like the orange man or not, his run for presidency is going to take place and he is going to have fans and he is going to generate hype. And I warned you of this before, is the mugshot collection, the open sea uh, mugshot collection. There are still some that are available. I think it's a very few that are available. I think there's probably 2,000 that are left because I think there's something like, here we go, 47,312. This is what they look like. There you go. You can have a look at that. The mugshot edition. Now, it was in December, I think almost, is it two years ago? I can't remember, but it was in December. I think it was yeah, not this December that we just had. Okay, one year ago, one year and two months ago, his very first edition came out and I showed you guys live on the show. I think there's literally a thumbnail with me and Donald Trump NFT card next to me. Uh, he looks like a superhero in that thumbnail. You can go back and watch that show. And I told you, I think that those were a buy. Those are now currently listed for 4x the price for 4x uh, the price that you would have bought it at right so they these ones over here if you look over here we can go through to open c let's just click there and then we can go through to uh listed and you can see it's currently going for 0.275 eth the last sale was 0.19 eth it's about 400 dollars right the cheapest ones are going for about $400. And that is from the very first collection. I still think these are worth it. They're $100 each or $99 per one. The same price as what these ones went for. Um, I think there'll be some hype around these. Just putting that out there. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, let's go on to some of the other altcoins. What are you guys looking at? What are you guys looking at? What do you want me to look at? Um, again, love or hate the orange man. That, that's just my thoughts, right? I'm not taking a, a side over here. I just want to make some money. Okay. I'm looking at the comments over here. Kulo, you say, Rune. Okay, let's look at Rune. I want to look at Rune because I did notice some interesting things on Rune. Let's quickly pull up Rune. Okay, Rune, Rune, Rune. Is it this one? Why do I not have Rune on here? I should have had Rune. It must have been deleted. Okay, Rune. Okay, Rune, I mean, has had a massive move. You can see uh, Chart Prime's money flow points of control pretty much showed you the range level. Here it is, range high. This is something that I looked at ages ago. I still have those charts outlined over here. Failed that level, starting to come towards the downside. You need to look at the next major level of support if you are trading Rune. And I'm just going to very quickly mark off what those key levels would be. Uh, pretty much around that $3.30 level. $3.30, I want to zoom in and go more to the order block over here, which led to uh, the next impulsive move towards the upside. I think that this will provide a little bit of support even beforehand. So coming in, yeah, $3.20, as I said, and scaling up to $3.60, $3.59. Watch as price comes into that level. This is what we're looking at. Look, money flow draws this in for you, right? Uh, this this indicator draws this in for you over here. You can see you had a falling wedge. Once you broke out of that, uh, it pretty much would have been a buy signal. It would have been a buy signal. Let's just see. Quickly check some of the settings over here. Okay, you can also put the order blocks. Let's see if the order blocks line up. 
Okay, there we go. Order blocks lines up with my order block. There it is. That one's a little bit tighter. Okay, there it is. There's the order block. There's a little bit tighter than mine. So that uh, would be the first level of interest. So that's kind of how you can utilize this indicator. Um, there's a lot of different things in the settings, but if you were to utilize something like this, it shows you where the money flow points of control is. Once you start to lose that, well, ultimately you do have an opportunity to enter into a short trade. So you would have your, I would probably go above this section over here with my stop. And then you're going to go TP1, TP2, TP3. And if it loses all of that and deviates all the way back down, TP4. That would be how you use the chart prime indicator. Let's just see. There should be a link in the description below. Um, if you go through to, is there a link in the description below? There we go. Chart prime over here. Click that link. That is uh, my referral code, which should give you that seven day free trial. So go and have a look over there. What else do we have? What else do we have? Let me know in the comments and let's continue on over here. Um, are we, you want to see if are we will have continuation for the bull run. Okay. Are we, are we, are we, where are you? Let's see. All right. Okay. Here's are we, where did are we go? All right, guys, I am streaming from my home setup, which I'm, to be honest, I'm actually not that used to. There it is popping up on the top. Okay, so this is what I've been looking at for a long time. Here's your range levels. It broke the longer term downtrend, started to break back into the range. We identified a potential bottoming scenario on our weave ages ago. Uh, why? Well, simply because um, you can see the tight consolidation, right? It's uh, sellers started to get exhausted. The money flow indicator again has drawn in the levels for you. Once you started to break that, it has the green buy, flips green, flips bullish, starts to continue towards the upside. You're now holding above that money flow point of control, which is looking good. Similar to my last lines that I drew in over here, you have reclaimed this key range level. You have your order block, which is there as well. Therefore, you're looking at continuation uh, towards $12.38. That's what I'll be looking at for our week, $12.38. Let's see if there is an actual trade that we can hopefully take um, for today's show. I think that I might actually take that trade on uh, Naka. Let's see. I'm going to observe later. I might take this trade on Naka. Let's see what else do we have. IMX. What have we got on IMX? Let's quickly go to that one. Okay, what about Chainlink? How's Chainlink doing? Okay, Tao, we know has been absolutely ripping. Is it too late? I don't think so. Is Tao too late? Is Tao too late? I don't think so. Uh, if that, that could be a pretty significant level. If it holds us, just need to observe that it's not going to be another lower high. If it is, maybe get one more sweep down into this zone, um, and then we can look for a break of structure. Okay, what else have we got? What else have we got? Is there anything on this list? Let's go on back onto our other list over here. Guys, is there anything in the sweet spot for a trade? Let me know in the comments. Anything in the sweet spot ready for a trade? Matic, you think Matic will go? Okay, let's go to Matic. We were already in a long on Matic. I was in a long on Matic. I might even be willing to take that long again, but not at this level. Um, I need to see... It is trying to reclaim the money flow points of control, but I need to see a little bit more. I think it's too soon uh, to take a long on Matic. Okay, banter bubbles, a reminder, you can win big here as well. So I've given you uh, Redotto. You can enter into the lottery with me, or you can also go to banter bubbles over here and predict to win one of these prizes. Uh, it's going to be, you predict the price of Solana, Ethereum, Suisse, Bonk, or Arbitrum. You'll receive $10,000 worth of that token, the closest guess to those by the select date, right? Which is going to be uh, on the 1st of March. Okay, it's going to be for the 1st of March, 2024. Whatever the price is going to be on Coinbase, uh, you can see everybody is throwing in their guesses over here. Maybe for tomorrow's show, I'm actually not sure I'm doing a show tomorrow because we have a getaway. Company getaway need to be there early in the morning. But for the next show and for the Whale Room community as well, what I'll do is I will chart where I think it will go. That's what I did for Bitcoin. I said most probable between forty-two and forty-eight thousand um, dollars, and I will let you guys know. Also, check out the link in the description below. 
if you are looking for a new exchange to trade on, I've been testing it out on Femex. I've currently got this trade open. Um, we are in profit. This is on Cello. Also, this was dropped for the whale room, this trade over here. We also have Lever, which is also in the profits. Um, ultimately, go and have a look. Femex futures trading, they have spot trading. It is a great exchange to use. You can do trading bots and a whole bunch of things. If you want to try out a new exchange, there's a link in the description below and you get a sign up bonus below. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, right? We need this to get to 130,000. We just need a couple more of you to subscribe. Smash the subscribe button. And also, finally, lastly, um, for the Whale Room community, we're going to go and do a live session now. Um, well, not right this second, doing the morning call at 11.30 a.m., which is one and a half hours from uh, now, 11.30 a.m., SAST, we will be doing a live session. For those of you, if you do want to join, you can check out Whale Room using the link in the description below. Uh, try it out for a month, see if you like it. And I think that's it. That is it from me, guys. I will catch you all on the next one. Have an absolutely stellar weekend. Uh, trade well, be safe, and see you on the next one. Cheers for now.